Ah, okay, thank you. Then, uh, Alec, please move. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm, well, uh, okay, so now we have uh, uh, opportunity to discuss uh, just the uh, talks of this afternoon. And in fact, uh, uh, there are five talks on um, uh, rather different subjects. And so, somehow I tried to, to just uh, uh, use different colors to, to uh, somehow um, separate uh, <laughs> these subjects, although somehow related. And as I know, um, uh, Zahar uh, uh, just is going to leave, have, have to leave, leave soon, so we can uh, just pass to discussion of, of his talk. Uh, so this subject, he is opening a new subject, subject uh, which will be continued by by um, review uh, review talk um, of Valentin Ivanovich Zakharov tomorrow morning. But still, we have opportunity to to discuss. Um, just I see uh, Valentin Ivanovich and Georgi Prokhorov just uh, connected. So uh, anyway, so I may I have some. I also have some some questions to, 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 to the speakers. And uh, just uh, my questions to Zahar, uh, because he considered different scales and different and different um, and, and co some constellations. So just I, 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 I just wanted to, to ask is, uh, can he comment about um, uh, relation to the well-known phenomenon of, of constellation? Of uh, physical and regulator fermions uh, of, of, uh, in uh, in the expression for XL anomaly, which leads to to the its nullification for heavy fermions. And my second uh, my question is because he he considers um, uh, effects uh, uh, for 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 short distances and large distances. I would <laughs> I would ask him to comment about the picture of Landau levels flow. And the description of anomaly in Landau levels flow uh, just shows that it is possible to, to count levels at each level, at infrared or ultraviolet. So, so if possible, can you comment on these two points, um, just Zahar? I am afraid I. Zahar, do you hear us? Or maybe Zah Zahar already left? But uh, we see he is still uh, present, but uh, for some reason, unfortunately, he <laughs> Well, yet, <laughs> well, yet now, uh, just uh, concerning his, uh, his uh, conclusions about pond splitting method uh, and using it for spin free half, uh, well, there is a problem how to define this point splitting, how to define the, the uh, just gauge link for spin three half. I believe this is uh, here uh, difficulties with spin three half theory uh, should also appear, which will over of, uh, which uh, just other uh, just uh, um, uh, bypassed in his theory, which we use. But maybe Zahar, but if Zahar don't hear, don't hear us. Or, or cannot speak. <laughs> uh, uh, I, uh, wait a second, I'm trying to make a phone call. I uh, actually, and maybe, maybe Zahara will try to connect, uh, but I also, we, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, Zahar, do you hear us? Okay. Wait a second. Uh, I, I apologize. I don't, I don't not hear the question. Uh, well, I, 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 I just pre the questions are if you see slides, do you see it? My slide. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. So here, my just I, I ask about the. I think this uh, point, uh, this is uh, maybe related to what 
um, I would like to ask you for a com comment. First, it's cancellation in the, um, between physical and regulated fermions for uh, using for um, Pauli Villars regulators in mm -hmm. axial anomaly, which leads to its nullification for mm -hmm. uh, heavy for heavy fermions. And second, uh, is it uh, is your argumentation some somehow can be related or um, uh, in in any way to picture of anomaly, well known picture of Nielsen Ninomia, uh, well finally uh, uh, Griba uh, and Feynman of Landau levels law. Uh, Landau levels may be counted at any. Um, at any uh, just uh, energy or at zero or at high energy. So here in this picture, the, um, this in this picture, these are related. So uh, I mean uh, infrared and ultraviolet. So if, if you if you would like to comment on on this to, on these points, that's, that's a very tricky question for me. And I guess I have a very interesting statement. Uh, if we try to consider chiral effects not in four dimensions, I, guess, I mean in two dimensions, uh -huh. there are also anomaly of finger like type, etc., etc. And so, in this case, you can show, the, for example, that some analog uh, of chiral, separa uh, chiral separation exists in Pauli Villas uh, regularization exists due to the following fact that they are well described uh, in, uh, with respect to simple thermodynamic. I mean that it can be regularized due to, uh, to, to consideration of simple thermodynamical potential. I mean, for example, free energy or, at this, or uh, a grand canonical potential it's, uh, or something like that. Uh, but for example, in case of um, uh, some analog of uh, chiral magnetic effect, I mean that uh, you um, add to the system non-zero uh, axial chemical potential after that uh, and after that try to calculate electric currents uh, in case for example uh, of uh, non-regular theory it seems uh, that it is possible i mean uh, that there are no problems for example with ultraviolet physics but in case when you uh, try to regularize theory from, for example, point of view of Pauli virus, uh, virus regulator, due to the fact that uh, chiral magnetic effect also into uh, two dimensions, some analog of chiral, chiral magnetic effect into dimension is insensitive to inclusion of mass, you will obtain zero current. But, but there are some uh, kind of physical regularization, for example, like point splitting method. Uh -huh. In which, in which you will obtain a massless limit chiral uh, uh, magnetic effect, some analog of chiral magnetic effect. I mean that you will have uh, some relation, uh, something like electric current that is equal coefficient in front of the anomaly over mm -hmm. chiral uh, chemical potential. And that means uh, that the question about uh, about uh, physical uh, regulator uh, regulator of uh, theory is very important in this case. I also want to point out that, for example, uh, thermodynamic, a simple thermodynamic with simple chemical potential, uh, in case, for example, four dimensions or, for example, two dimensions, is um, well defined in the infrared domain and also in the ultraviolet domain. So, if you try to add Pauli virus uh, fermions, you will not obtain anything more. That will be just uh, thermodynamic. And for example, in case of chiral chemical potential, I mean, uh, mu 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 five, uh, you will have a lot of problems in, uh, for, for example, in the mass set case in the ultraviolet domain. Mm -hmm. And if you try to uh, add, for example, powerly virus regulator, it must be sensitive to uh, mu five. That means that uh, from your theory point of view, addition of Pauli Villers fermions uh, uh, will uh, generate uh, non zero density of Pauli Villers fermions. Oh. That's a very uh, interesting observation. Uh, in standard thermodynamic, they are too heavy. Mm -hmm. We try to, 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 to turn the mass to infinity, and that means that they are decoupled from our infrared physics uh -huh. and nothing more. But in case of axial chemical potential, <laughs> they can obtain a non-zero density. Uh -huh. Can happen non-zero density. So that's, I guess, uh, that the question about, for example, um, about correct regularization of such a series is very important. Mm -hmm. The second observation, I want, uh, I don't know if I have possibility to ask the question tomorrow uh, for, for Politino Ranch or not, that 
also as axial anomaly, also uh, as uh, gravitation anomaly, they can be calculated for, uh, with the inclusion of Pauli Leo's fermions. Okay, actually, actually, tomorrow we are supposed also to, to, to have a sort of <laughs> which, which would appear a sort of continuation of our uh, session. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> that, that is my point of view. <laughs> that, that, that's all. Uh, because we uh, that will be a very interesting question about correct regularization of chiral uh, series of uh, chiral series because Pauli Weaver's uh, regulator um, is not not quite well uh, behave in uh, ultraviolet domain in this uh, in this series that, that's all <laughs> that I can say I, I don't know because because Valentin Ivanovich and Georgi Prokhorova here so just uh... <laughs> Do uh, so, so the, the question oh, is, or oh, oh, it's possible to do it tomorrow? Okay. Uh, discussion after the talk of Valentin Ivanovich. Okay, so, uh, if you wish, I guess it is possible. But, uh, yeah, just, but we'll see. Okay, okay. So if the well, because Zahar Zahar just have, have to to leave, so we we should thank thanks to, to, to again to the to Zahar. And um, uh, but now we we should continue. We are supposed to continue, and probably also uh, just uh, the, the the talk uh, now from the last uh, talk to the first talk of Nikolai Nikolaevich Chasov. But is uh, Nikolai Nikolaevich? Are you here? Because because, because now I I think the time in Novosibirsk is already quite right. quite late. Well, actually, just this, 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 what I just wanted to ask, uh, to the, because from one side, uh, in his calculation, it looks like uh, there are count loops, uh, so just maybe it looks like molecule. From other side, it looks like uh, uh, just uh, tetra quarks. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I think uh, just if oh, but but anyway, uh, although speaker is not here, if anybody would like to. Uh, just uh, say something about this talk, even in the absence of speaker, just. Uh... Uh, okay. Uh, Arik, in fact, uh, concerning your second question, is there exist any QCD sum rule calculation uh -huh. for the, uh -huh. for, for the uh -huh. four currents? In fact, I have seen several papers. Uh, um, when these uh, calculations and studies were made, just uh, just for these methods, for uh, what he speaking. I do about. not remember. But no, uh, but, uh, what, what kind no, of no, methods? What, what kind of uh, methods were considered? No, of, of course, of course, there are. My question is for for methods which he considers. For, over, I, uh, are there also I another? I guess there were some. Maybe, maybe, but when it would be a for uh, A zero mesons and F zero mesons. For, for, for uh -huh. I, uh, but it is necessary to um, sure, sure, to but uh, more carefully. Yeah, yeah. But okay, if if uh, 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 just the uh, um, second talk was an experimental talk, just but uh, is the speaker here still? Alexey Merkov. Uh, okay. Again. Well, actually, I, uh, this was it's my personal interest about the angular distributions in uh, of, of products of decay, in particular for dark matter, because uh, well, if somebody if there are missed uh, transverse energy, is it possible to define energy uh, angular distribution not only of observed but unobserved? Anyway, because the speaker is not here, we are now coming to the uh, just talk uh, of, of Andrei Kataev. And uh, well, I have some questions, but I know that in the audience are Andrei, uh, are experts, um, Andrei Grozin and Sergei Mikhailov. Uh, just Andrei, uh, because maybe Andrei is also in Novosibirsk. It's, uh, I guess it's quite late. Maybe we ask Andrei to, 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 to say something. Okay, I'll try to say something. Uh, I'm now looking at uh, this uh, very recent archive uh, paper by Andrei Kataev. 
and uh, uh, I'll make a few comments about uh, the section uh, about the relation between uh, cusp anomalous dimension and quark anti quark potential. Uh, uh, your equation 26, if you remember it, in yes. fact defines uh, the quantity V cusp of alpha S only up to alpha S cube. Uh, the term alpha S to the fourth is inside this O large, and so it is undefined. And so you may not use it in your main result study. In your result study, you may use only uh, the first term. All the rest is undefined, uh, not uh, uncalculated, but just undefined, uh, not covered by definition 26. Uh, and this first term uh, was obtained uh, in our paper with uh, uh, Hen and Krisha Karchemsky in uh, 2016, so there's absolutely nothing new. Uh, this uh, remaining uh, uh, three lines of uh, formulas uh, seem to have no meaning because this quantity TAA, uh, coefficient of C squared, is not just uncalculated, as I said, it is undefined. It is undefined because of this uh, log delta term. Uh, which you may not include. Uh, okay, uh, okay, then question. Uh, uh, thank you for this comment, but uh, um, is there any, uh, just question to you, is there any relation, maybe there any relation to the expression for the static potential when at the three loop level, we have not only perturbative, theory contribution A3 uh, equation 13, but also infrared uh, log term pi square C A cub uh, L divided by A, which was not considered uh, uh, in this calculation. And uh, we were expecting that the same may happen in the case of cast anomalous dimension. So we may neglect this uh, term O from alpha S fourth log delta divided by delta, uh, as well as we are neglecting, not considering in the realization of uh, studies, the coefficient um, um, uh, related to infrared uh, log term. I don't know whether this is correct or not. And to try co to consider only perturbative higher order contributions uh, neglecting this term. So this was the logic. Uh, okay, I don't I see. know whether this is uh, uh, correct or not, but the logic was uh, to try to make the bridge between the existence of this infrared uh, uh, which we are uh, not considering, uh, but considering only perturbative contributions. Uh, well, uh, I'd say, uh, I'd try to formulate it in such a way. In equation 13, there is this uh, logarithmic term in the potential. Uh, and it has exactly the same physical uh, reason as log delta term in the cusp anomalous dimension. It's the same kind of contribution. Uh, but uh, you cannot say, uh, let's neglect this two. It seems meaningless because if uh, uh, instead of log delta, I consider log two delta or log delta over two or whatever else, I'll shift the finite term, the finite alpha, alpha s to the fourth uh, term by a finite quantity. Maybe I told not uh, by purpose not, we are not neglecting it. We are un understanding that they do exist in the full result, but uh, in these considerations, we are considering adding it uh, separately. We are trying to consider only renormalization group controllable contributions. I do not know whether this approach is correct or not. This was the idea. 
Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not I'm saying I'm... that it is not important. We are not neglecting it in the analysis for further considerations, but we are concentrated on the analysis of these equations just to for separating. Because of course, in the higher order terms, I guess even uh, at the for loop level, there do exist the information both also about uh, in the in the static potential about the infrared log terms uh, yeah. uh, also sometimes calculated, but we are not considering it simply for uh, in these studies uh, because uh. because beta function is not uh, appearing there. Well, the beta function is, does not appear there. That's right. This uh, coefficient of this log delta was actually calculated by me and uh, Max Stolhofen uh, some years ago. And I, I sent this reference to you to today. Uh, so the coefficient is known and it has uh, uh, no relation to beta function from my point of view, absolutely. You're right. But I, I'm, uh, I don't uh, understand the meaning of this result 30. If uh, the quantity T13AA uh, on the last line uh, is just ill-defined, uh, I can uh, change it by, uh, by any finite amount I want by redefining logarithm. Okay, thank you. I'll keep this question in mind. Uh, maybe uh, whether it is, you mean that this quantity T13AA is maybe related, is related to the uh, ill-defined because of the existence uh, of this extra term you calculated in the paper you sent. Yes, exactly. I'd say that uh, this T13 A is well defined simply. Uh, sorry? T13 uh, A -A, from my point of view is ill defined. In view, uh, why? Uh, whether you say it is ill defined in view of the existence of the term alpha s fourth log delta divided by delta with the uh, uh, with the uh, um, uh, color factor calculated by you. Mm, yes, of course, because I can uh, shift uh, I can shift this logarithm by any finite quantity, right? Why uh, choose log delta? Uh, if I say I prefer log two delta, am I wrong? I I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, so there do exist additional ambiguity. Yes, this is ambiguous. This is my statement. And uh, one more comment, uh, by the way. So these uh, terms uh, in 30, uh, all these uh, long three lines, uh, are um, for loop uh, contributions to the cusp anomalous dimensions. Some of them are known, some of them are not known. Uh, for example, um, uh, contribution CA squared times NF uh, is not known in cusp anomalous dimension. Uh, so, uh, uh, but it, it, I suppose, also contributes to this, uh, to the same thing because of beta zero times CA squared. So this is uh, a known quantity, all right. All other things here are known from our paper with uh, Hen, uh, Stolhofen and Brüser, and they are just rewritten right. here. And, uh, but uh, my comment is that uh, rather many uh, terms are known actually at next level, at five loop level. At five loop level in the CUSP, uh, uh, all terms uh, with color structures uh, without CA. So uh, color structures of the form CF to some power times TFNF to some other power. All are known. Uh, not all are published. Some uh, I'll publish uh, very soon. Uh, I, I, I suppose uh, during a week or two. Um, I'll publish two new uh, five-loop contribution to gamma cusp. 
uh, but uh, some of them uh, were known uh, quite a long time ago. Uh, uh, I mean, terms with uh, highest power of NF and terms with next to highest power of NF. I also sent this reference to you. Uh, so uh, uh, some number of uh, next uh, term in 30 can be obtained quite easily. Uh, thank you for this comment. It is necessary to keep it also in mind. But then the question is, uh, you see, in fact, we are comparing the existing calculations uh, for the static potential with the results of the cast anomalous dimension. And the question here is a period because for the static potential, only a three term perturbative is known and at O at alpha S4 level, to my knowledge, only quadratic estimates do exist. And to try to get these, the similar studies, including your result, it may be interesting to have uh, uh, to have some NF, at least NF dependent terms, the static potential. Of course, uh, uh, highest powers of NF and static potential are trivial to all orders than alpha s. If you want hundreds order, I can immediately produce it, uh, give it to you. So highest powers of uh, NF are trivial. Next to highest, uh, not quite trivial, but nearly trivial in, but in, in static work anti quark potential, I mean. So they are certainly known at five loop level. And I think uh, in my paper, they will uh, written up to eight loops. Uh, to static potential? Yes. Uh, uh, oh, no, sorry, maybe. Uh, uh, to eight loops uh, for uh, cusp. Uh, and uh, uh, this means uh, seven loops in uh, potential. In potential, there's uh, always one loop less. Up to seven loops, they are known. Uh, I, I mean, next to highest power of NF. What are, uh, uh, I will be grateful for the reference, but this means we, uh, we may uh, have to think about this for future. Thank you. Okay. I'll definitely be very pleased to be in contact with you and to continue discussion. Well, if 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 I may intervene in this very detailed um, this, uh, uh, discussion operating the number numbers of equations, but um, still one of my questions concerns just physical meaning of for this procedure of introduction of coupling like beta of alpha divided by alpha and uh, my question is to, uh, to, to just to 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 both <laughs> andres uh, is it is the appearance of um, beta function in cusp anomalous dimension is it uh, physically um, understandable it is clear it, is it no <laughs> it is my naive question First, please ask Andre. He's the yeah, please, 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 Andre, because you are not so often appears uh, here, even even online. So, if you are still here, uh, yes, I'm here. Um, okay. Uh, well. Uh, to some extent, I think it is understandable. I cannot say it's uh, uh, completely and absolutely clear, but uh, uh, in this limit of nearly anti-parallel lines where uh, cusp is related to static quark anti-quark potential and static quark anti-quark potential uh, is very closely related to beta function, it's obvious. Uh Please, please, please. <laughs> uh, so, ah, you mean uh, because the beta function corresponds to some uh, just insertions to the to the gluonic line, something like that, right? Oh, uh, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So this means that you, if beta functions modifies the into the the, pro, the just propagators and propagators are entered to the. Uh, entering the potential so potential is related to beta function i see i see and in turn 
as you say, and well, okay, so for, for, for this means to, that for cars panamellous dimension, it's physically motivated to use uh, to use this uh, 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 this sort of coupling. I see, I see it's at least uh, it, we it, can it, formulate it slightly differently. Uh, in 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 the cusp, we can also consider uh, just uh, diagrams with gluon line with some self energy insertions. This is exactly uh, what uh, yeah, yeah. This is exactly what I mean. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. This is what yes, I. And by by the way, just one more short uh, comment. Yeah. Mm, uh, in uh, my uh, in in addendum to my paper, which is called QED Cusp Anomalous Dimension uh -huh. uh, at four loops, now, there is a general proof that to all orders uh, in alpha s uh, uh, coefficients uh, in this difference of cusp v cusp and v cuckoo bar coefficients which have maximal power of cf. Uh -huh. Uh, CF to the maximal power times TF and F. Uh, so uh, number of, of flavors uh, is just to the first power. Sorry. Uh, such contribution vanish uh, to all orders in this difference. Uh, such contributions come exactly from the diagrams with just one uh, self energy insertion to the gluon line, either in potential or in cusp, doesn't matter. And uh, uh, these contributions uh, are the same in, the, in both of these calculations, essentially. They cancel in the difference uh, V cusp uh, and V cuckoo bar mm -hmm. to all of uh, us. Uh, in, uh, uh, in some sense, uh, probably this, this is because both quantities are maybe related and are related uh, to uh, and are defined through the um, uh, uh, gauge invariant Wilson, Wilson loop, but with different contours. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Maybe, maybe this, is, and then the difference of these two uh, gauge invariant Wilson loops, but with different contours, mm -hmm. may affect, uh, may have the impact of this analysis. I'm afraid I haven't quite caught what you mean, but uh, I can yeah, consider static potential, <laughs> static potential can be expressed through the gauge invariant Wilson loop, but with different control, not like a uh, cut phenomenon's dimension. Yes, uh, okay. they're changing only the control, and the question is whether the the, because whether these constellations is related to this fact that, in fact, the uh, uh, contour is changed in the Wilson loop. Yes, of course, it is related. To define static potential and to define cusp phenomenal dimension. These two contours can be transformed to each other by conformal symmetry. Okay, this is the answer. They can be transformed to each other by conformal symmetry. And that is why, in the difference, these effects are canceling out. Well, OK, so just uh, this uh, by uh, the, the physical meaning was probably my, my main interest. And in this uh, important particular case, I, I think it's, it's I got uh, quite, quite interesting cancer. But uh, also we have uh, here another expert, uh, Sergei Mikhailov. Uh, Sergei, please, please. Uh, yeah. uh, I, my question looks like some uh, first derivatives. Uh, let me ask uh, Andrei Grozin. Uh -huh. uh, can, can, can he uh, predict anything concerning the maximum power of beta zero in this expression? Maximum power of beta zero? Yeah. It's uh, trivial as always. Uh, uh, this difference of, uh, no, well, uh, I mean, this equation 30 from uh, Andrei Kataev's uh, recent uh, uh, paper. Uh, so, uh, highest powers of beta zero are known to all orders, and uh, there is an exact 
formula where gamma functions, which you can expand to hundreds of if you want to, absolutely no problem. Well, okay. So uh, the prediction uh, can be done for any order of perturbation theory by uh, by using some generating function. Okay, am I right? Yes. Well, well. So uh, you see, yeah. if if we start to discuss uh, multi-loop calculations, let me uh, ask something more general, in a sense. Yeah, mm, your approach, uh, uh, Andrei Katayev, is based mainly on one observation and uh, a chain of uh, assumptions. The observation looks like this. In the right-hand side of CBK relation, we find on a level of three or four alpha S, the uh, twofold uh, sum that includes the expansion in beta divided by alpha power s and uh, the standard standard uh, series for the coefficient. After that, you said assumption uh, assumption number one. It works for all order in the right-hand side of Kruter relation. This is the first one. The second, it works for every factor in the left-hand side of CBK relation. After that, using this um, assumption, you can obtain the expansion for uh, S and uh, D function. And the next one, it works for every I don't know, given variant quantities when you will try to apply this for the other quantities. Can you now estimate what is the most big assumption in this chain? The most big assumption in this chain, of course, that uh, it works for a, uh, 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 I think that. Um, it we know also already the answer that that, that it means whether it works for separately for every quantity pronunciation group in my variant. Well, okay. <laughs> well, okay. So just um... uh, 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 please one more question. Uh, to Andre Grozino, he mentioned my paper, but I would like to ask him not to forget that, that this is the paper of two authors with young collaborator and actively working Victor Morkaya. This is my request. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so your comment is that you have a collaborator, yes? Of course, yeah. This paper, uh, no, 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 the, not the comment. Uh, the, the request to Andre when citing this work, not to forget that this work was done not only by me and in the, the paper, not only by me, but also by Victor Mamakayev and myself. Okay, uh, but uh, by the way, Andre, let, let because you mentioned your uh, young collaborator, which is uh, we know that he's very experienced person, but let me mention that uh, in, in your presentation, you make on the on the first page, you make typo in his first name and uh, in, in, in the quotations, you make typo in his um, family name. So also you should, you should pay. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> 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 okay. Just to focus our audience on this family. Oh, of, of course, this is of, of course this is just 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 a joke. But I think this is extra extra reason to just with what we mentioned um, just Andre Andre's uh, collaborator. Okay, so just if if this uh, all um, because this is very detailed uh, discussion. 
of this. So we, we may come to the uh, talk of Anatoly Kotika, which I marked in the same blue color. And by the way, Sergei Mikhailov is a great expert also. He was uh, probably the most quoted, quoted oh, uh, person in, in Anatoly talk. And I must stress without any typos. So maybe, Sergey, would you like to say something about token of, of, of Anatoly? Huh? Sergey, do you hear us? Let me react on the question to this talk, the last question. Yes. Uh, concerning the influence on the pole remover from the point of view of the changes of uh, skins, different skins. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, some, someone with name George uh, have asked him. The, the Paris, him. yes, yes, okay. Yes. First of all, first position, the Landau pole is the child of one loop approximation only. For the next approximation, you have another singularity. For example, at two loop, we have the singularity like inverse uh, square root of L. Mm -hmm. And at a, a, a n loop approximation, you will have the square, the, the, the root of uh, index n. Yeah, absolutely another kind of singularity. But but also this singularity is located um, at uh, uh, just in the in the region where it uh, the function must be analytic, right? Uh, yeah, but uh, is, the, 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 the corresponding coefficients in front of uh, in front of the beta function expansion, the beta uh, the beta coefficient that start to changes with the beta two in a class of minimal scheme will change only the position of cut mm -hmm. in the corresponding definitions but so but also it will be cut in the just on physical region right uh, not in uh, ah yes on physical yes on physical. this is uh, my, in Euclid, uh, in actually, Euclidean, in it, Euclidean. It, exactly actually my point uh, uh, let me join this uh, this discussion <laughs> using 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 my uh, my possibility that concerning this question, I would say that original suggestion of um, the Redmond Duretsky, um, Bogolubov, Lagunov, Sherkov, Salovsov was to impose the correct analytic properties. And I would say that by this procedure, all the singularity poles, uh, just and logs will be eliminated in the unphysical in Euclidean region. Yeah, yeah. And even more. For the uh, position of the uh, coupling at at unity index at zero in in mu squared, mm -hmm. uh, the influence of the next loops uh, uh, are zero. That was proven uh, by the uh, Salovtsov and Sharkov. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all. Uh, yeah. May I a little bit tell uh, about this scheme dependence uh, uh -huh. on this my side? Uh, coupling constant is scheme dependent. The power of coupling constant is scheme dependent. Derivations of coupling constant is scheme dependent. Of course, all things are scheme dependent, but uh, in principle, all this uh, formula uh, not, not fixed uh, B0, B1, B, B, B2, so it's uh, so, so coefficient better function. So it should be worked always, but maybe, for example, some, uh, I don't know, at the final result, some uh, difference between leading code result uh, uh, plus uh, and uh, some full result. Uh, full is really three or four orders. Maybe something uh, numerical difference will be different but uh, all things should be correct okay and, and i believe the main point the main point that all the unphysical singularity singularity will be eliminated yeah, the, yeah. I, I think it's, is... uh, it, it should be because it's a 
Challenge Lemon uh, transformation from it, it doesn't uh, depend practically yeah, on the yeah. beta function expansion. You have chosen only small people to my question from Petrov. Yes, yes, please, please, Volodya, please. So, first of all, I have to reproach you that you uh, misuse your position of the discussion leader because you concentrated on the relatively narrow subject which uh, is maybe accessible for the narrow circle of uh, experts then second you have nominated experts it, it does it, it's not good you should not nominate people who are or are not okay now let's come to physics uh, concerning this uh, landau uh, singularity certainly it is not eliminated i would like to emphasize this because it's not eliminated it is placed on infinitely many sheets of the Riemannian space, which is realized by the logarithm. And uh, the fact that it is on the uh, second and other sheets does not mean that this uh, singularity disappears, because we know that, for example, if you take the, the pole, uh, the complex pole in the second sheet, this is uh, quite physical uh, quantity, it is a resonance. And so it remains. Uh, I want to, to stress with my uh, speech that the problem remains. We eliminated from the physical sheet, but they remain on other sheets. And if something remained as a singularity, it should be explained in physical terms. And this is open question. Okay. Um, but actually concerning your first comment, of course, uh, just as I was stressing, I was asking that, of course, each, uh, unfortunately, just uh, to uh, the, the two, two speakers already left us. But in any case, uh, and, and uh, just uh, I, I use the opportunity of coming to the, the experts in, on, on, on some, uh, on, on actually on, on these two talks. But of course, each talk, it's, it's, uh, I, 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 I was asking, is anybody interested in putting question or comment? So this, is, this remains. And by the way, concerning, I completely agree with what you said. And just let me mention that such procedure of uh, just imposing the correct, uh, the correct uh, um, analytic properties. This is what is done. And this is, of course, concerns physical, physical sheet. But uh, just uh, I, let me add that similar procedure and just, uh, just uh, I did with, with Italian collaborators uh, for gra graviton propagator. And then it's possible um, because usually gra uh, graviton propagator with uh, uh, taking into, into account loops of um, uh, just standard model particle. Uh, it it's, uh, produces uh, a lot of extra singularities. Some of these singularities may be, may be interpreted as, as precursors of black holes, but some are in wrong places, and it's possible to do so. Indeed, this procedure just impose, imposes the uh, analytic properties, and this concerns only, uh, only the, the physics, physics sheet. And usually, Extra singularities appears, and for this graviton propagator, it's very clear that these singularities do appear at, at, at other, other sheets. Analytic properties are there. Okay, may I ask the second question, the question of a fool? Sure. Please, please. Uh, to Andre, Andre uh, Kataev. So, uh, as a layman, I would uh, ask you the following. Uh, there is some uh, scheme uh, which is uh, called the uh, Toft scheme, where beta function has only two terms. And if we deal with uh, scheme independent physical quantity, why not to use only, the, only this simple <laughs> scheme without uh, further calculation of many, many terms? We saw labor's work you have done. I, I understand that maybe there is something silly in my question, but anyway, I would like to uh, appreciate your answer. Uh Okay, thank you for this question. Uh, in fact, uh, we have started, uh, uh, for example, the behavior of the uh, 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 generalized cruel relation, CBK relation in this Toft scheme. And the fact is that in this case, the beta function is not factorized, uh, uh, but conformal 
symmetry limit do exist. And the Toft scheme, it, uh, 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 you shouldn't forget that to, in order to study the scheme dependence, it is necessary to consider also how these changes of the beta function will affect the green function because uh, the higher order coefficients in the Toft scheme, uh, in the Toft, um, say, Toft MS class scheme, nevertheless do appear, but they do appear as the extra contributions for the green functions, say, for the D function and, and for the Bjorken sum rule. This question was started in our paper with. Uh, uh, Garkush some time ago, and the formula do exist there. Uh, okay, I still don't understand. For example, you don't check every every uh, every time the Lorentz invariance, considering everything what you do in different uh, frames. Okay, but you know that what you calculate is Lorentz invariance, so you can choose one uh, frame which is uh, convenient for you and to continue. In this case, also, I, I would say that if you consider scheme independent quantity, why not to, to, to choose the most, the most easy, the most convenient? That I can't understand. Very simple way, because in the Toft scheme, when you have two coefficients, when we are calculating green functions, say for the D function in this Toft scheme, MS in Toft scheme, they do appear extra coefficients which are not, which cannot be related to the concrete Feynman diagrams. They are not calculated. This is the finite renormalization procedure. And this finite renormalization procedure, when the finite renormalization procedure is doing, sometimes it is uh, not possible to uh, formulate these finite renormalization procedures on the diagrammatic language. Yes, but excuse me. Oof. Okay, okay. I, I, I'm not very much satisfied, but maybe we continue later, not to take uh, time from other participants. Thank you. Well, extra terms always appear in terms of renormalization group when you move from one scheme to another, and it is just the manifestation of the renormalization invariance, right? So if I calculate something in third order and then I change the scheme, then the extra term appears, which appears in the fourth order. That's what gives me the renormalization invariant of the quantity I'm calculating. So I don't see why appearance or appearance of extra terms is so alarming or dissatisfying. They are not unsatisfying, but you cannot express them on the diagrammatic language. That's why. Starting from that. Uh, uh, if you are trying to speak on the language of Feynman diagrams, we cannot calculate, say, in the Toft scheme, the contributions of these diagrams directly. We must first calculate in the MS-like scheme and then do the finite renormalization procedure. And they do appear in the green functions, but we can't from the first principles formulate what is a top scheme, why the third coefficient is disappearing, why the fourth coefficient is disappearing, and so on. This is the answer. Okay. Okay, so are there any more questions? I think especially for this two, two talks, um... Uh, on just high order perturbation theory. Maybe I misuse uh, if nobody more wants to ask, I, I, I would like to. Uh, yes, 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 please. Uh, and uh, still, still I have, I see um, just a, a raised hand of um, uh, Harshit uh, Sinhal. I, I, I am from. Let him, from speak. Let him speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I, I I'm pronounced. Uh, did I pronounce your name co correctly? <laughs> uh, don't worry about it. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, as long as um, you call me out, it's all, it's okay. So thank you for recognizing me. Um, this question is for um, honestly for all the experts uh, here. So my question is like before these talks, we had a lot of uh, interesting conversations about um, QGP, which is the quark gluon plasma. 
and which also depended a lot on uh, QCD, right? So uh, regarding the last two talks, when we talked about fractional analytic QCD and the chiral effects especially. So my question is, um, could these effects be relevant when we're studying the um, other esoteric substances like um, QGB, for example? Uh, I did I understand correctly that you asking about um, applicability of of fractional analytic perturbation theory to uh, studies of phase transition and quogluon plasma? Is it exactly? Yeah, 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 yeah. So just Tola, what do you think? <laughs> no. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> if, but why not? If, well, if you I can, if I can. If, uh, if I can, yeah. I, I, I can, yeah. I have uh, just uh, occasionally, I, I can give some partial answer that he, he just yeah. in in um, some uh, codes which are used for descript transport codes, which are used for description uh, of, um, of uh, the quark gluon plasma, it uh, appears uh, coupling constant. And well, it's make uh, reasons, uh, make uh, it's possible to use he analytic uh, analytic coupling to this and uh, i believe i was uh, just uh, some years ago i was telling this to the expert i don't know whether they react <laughs> to this but uh, if uh, just people uh, from uh, just this physics uh, <laughs> will will are uh, participating and he us um, just maybe uh, this is a good idea to use uh, to use the, this analytic uh, and for example, let me say even more. There is coupling, which usually depends on temperature. And then just in order to avoid singularities and make reason, and it was actually my suggestion to the people doing this, to use analytic coupling instead of usual coupling depending on, on temperature. This is, this is a one particular possibility. I am sure that there are more and the answer of uh, Anatoly why not is <laughs> completely <laughs> correct and maybe because he is he is um, also uh, expert in in many things maybe he will he, he will try to push this uh, just also by himself uh, this is uh, and Val okay, Valodia, Val okay yes because i think well, that Alec, we will discuss uh, uh, personally yeah, so I, I feel that these methods, right, they could be really applicable in a lot of, um, you know, practical fields. And quark like growing plasma is not just uh, one of them, right? So yeah, my question yeah. was like generally, so what what can be the practical practicality ap applications of, of the things we talked about in these three or four talks? Yeah, yeah this this is the one practical in, in quotes you may, uh, uh, so not only coupling depending on, on uh, momentum transfer in, in uh, uh, Euclidean or pseudo Euclidean, but also on temperature because coupling uh, just in codes depends on temperature. This is this is this is what is done. Maybe it's possible and it's possible in insert the analytic coupling and also coupling dependent in, in uh, different orders. This is possible in principle to do. <laughs> so this is yes, maybe. It's, it's not it's not complete. Uh, but but uh, but it's it's some uh, partial partial answer. And again, sorry, Val Valodia, you have okay, okay. much ado about technical means. But I want to uh, to ask questions concerning our first speaker about four quark nature of large scale mesons. If I um, correctly understood what he said, uh, I understood that only quark quark anti quark anti quark configuration is possible as constituents of these scalar masons. But my question is why uh, the fraction of pure gluon state is impossible for that? Because we know, for example, that in eta eta prime, there is some noticeable fraction of gluonic state where this is the, in the state of pure glue. Uh, but this, when we lower the mass of the meson, if you believe to Nikolai Achasov, so the, the, the glue state, the glue fraction, they begin to be uh, somewhat suppressed. What is the mechanism of such suppression if I uh, correctly understand his statement? He is, he is not now will we, 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 Somebody else will, uh, will say he is. What, what, I, what, what I can, uh, can say, it, of course there are hybrids which contains 
also quarks and gluons, and there are some candidates for for hybrids more or less in the similar mass region. My impression is that he uses here only uh, usually hybrid is a quark anti quark gluon, but maybe if you have four quarks, it's already sufficient. <laughs> so this 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 is all I can say. Maybe maybe it's a what uh, as far as and uh, this is uh, he. It's his old work, and I remember his uh, uh, just suggestion that it is uh, he used count loops. So his point is that it's and if you have count loops, this means there are two quarks, two anti quarks. Maybe this is what's sufficient, and uh, it's possible to avoid gluon. Maybe just uh, in in a sort of what is uh, Occam razor, right? So it's it's yeah. possi it's possible to avoid, but okay. maybe he he can answer. He could answer. He could answer more. Okay, it's a bit of a call I cannot uh, answer, and I want uh, also to 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 add my my last last comment. In in principle, in physics, in our physics, uh, exist quantities which do not depend on the coupling constant at all, and uh, this is the intercept of any physical rigid trajectory. Mm -hmm. The rigid trajectory at mass equal to zero does not depend on the coupling constant at all, and this is a simple consequence of its uh, renormalization group invariance. So uh, this is an open question how to calculate this, uh, this, these quantities, because they not, do not depend on the coupling, they depend on the, the gauge group at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, don't pay much attention. Uh -huh. Maybe, <laughs> actually, actually in this, in this coupling, uh, in some models which uh, to, uh, Tolia Kotikov showed, some some models provide some finite some finite infrared values, right? So maybe maybe in some model you will get something which which is just number. Could it be? Could it be? Uh, and then uh, this would be okay, right? For not your not with means of perturbation theory. That's that yeah. Is yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I'm not so big expert. But uh, as I, I know, for example, for, from a gluon trajectory, in, in, in gluon trajectory of Lipatov and Fazin, uh, uh, they depend of coupling constant. Maybe no. uh, they don't know argument of coupling no, constant. No, uh, but, uh, well, they cannot because if they will depend on the coupling constant explicitly, they begin immediately renormalization group non invariant and they lose the status of a physical quantity. That's not impossible. That's not possible. But actually, uh, uh, Lipatov, so we have discussed with him. He, he agreed and he tried to estimate just trying to find out some uh, some ways to estimate beyond the perturbation theory these intercepts. Okay. Okay, I'm finished. Okay, okay, good. So just quite, quite, uh, we have quite an intensive discussion covering many, many, many issues. Well, uh, and uh, actually, uh, Zakhar Haitukov was uh, was uh, going to leave, but I see he, him now in the in the just list uh, of participants. So maybe also if there are some questions concerning, but also this will be continued tomorrow. Yeah. So tomorrow, tomorrow we will still have a time uh, just to continue the issue of uh, anomalous transport and uh, plasma and. Uh, after talk, um, just to Valentin Ivanovich Zakharov. And to, for today, just we are now more or less uh, just uh, according to the schedule, we are coming right to the to the time of uh, of finishing of our of our discussion. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, we can finish at this point.